Good morning, students of the 21st century. The mission you are about to embark upon will take you to the ends of the earth, introduce you to the interesting people that inhabit this earth, and allow you to learn almost anything you want about the world around you, past, present, and future. The mission is not for the faint of heart. There will be cha challenges and trials around every turn. You are the most qualified person for this mission. The fate of the world rests in your hands alone. Will you accept the challenge? If the answer is yes, you will start by committing to use internet tools and resources to their full potential and always go the extra mile when doing in-class and homework assignments. If you choose not to participate in this assignment, you will fail. This message will self-destruct in two seconds. Okay. <laughs> well, enough of this. Um, welcome to my video blog about multimedia in the classroom. My name is Kevin and I will be your host. Since there are only a few of you looking at my blog, I would like to take a moment and think about uh, uh, and think about how hmm hold on I just read something wrong. I would like you to take a moment and think about how you would have felt if one of your teachers during your high school career had <clears throat> opened their class uh, with an introduction similar to the one you just saw. What do you think the classroom atmosphere would be like? What about the teacher? Would you think they're weird or possibly exciting and maybe get a feeling that you're going to learn something? <laughs> I don't know if students today would ever even know about the Mission Impossible theme song, but I'm willing to guess that you do. <clears throat> well, using this kind of media and building on some common knowledge helps students to be more attentive in class and possibly remember lessons better? Well, I hope so. I've been using multimedia in my classroom for many years. YouTube and Discovery Education are some of my best educational friends. I don't, uh, it doesn't even matter what subject I'm teaching at the moment. In a matter of seconds, I can have a lesson that can connects uh, connects to students, and if nothing else, use multi using multimedia is better than listening to me lecture all hour long. I found a a short little article in EdTech Review by uh, Santos <laughs> mm, Santos Bashka. Uh, that he wrote in his uh, Twitter blog that says uh, multimedia can stimulate more than one sense at a time and in doing so may be more attention getting and attention holding which only makes sense uh, students today have grown up in a digital society they they understand technology they know instinctively how to use this kind of stuff so it's very frustrating and disturbing uh, when I see a school, uh, mine included, that shuts down the technology when they enter into the, the classroom. I encourage my kids to have uh, technology at their disposal, whether it be for a, in a cell phone or, or a tablet or uh, whatever they, the, the device they can use at the time. <laughs> Multimedia is very, very adaptive to every kind of curriculum. Students are also very willing to experiment and even get into what I call the monkey see, monkey do syndrome. As they learn how to do something on the computer and then become very eager to show uh, this new found knowledge with their friends, quickly their friends learn it uh, and then they apply this new uh, new knowledge to the things that they're doing and even try and do better 
uh, than, than, than the person that showed them in the first place. So monkey see, monkey do. Uh, this creates a healthy rivalry in the classroom that can be very beneficial and super exciting when you look at the lessons they can create. Uh, to go along with this, I found a, uh, a another, well, it, 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 to go along with this philosophy of the classroom setting in multimedia, I found a uh, top 10 reasons to use multimedia in the classroom blog by uh, Barbara Schroeder, who's actually a BSU faculty member. Um, her number one reason for using multimedia may not be the top choice, but it's the one that she put as number one, states that it develops a community of social learning. So what does that mean? Well, um, today we have the ability to create social communities online uh, so we can go outside of the classroom. That means we can reach out to other places, other people, other cultures, other, other, other countries, and we can develop this, this community uh, by bringing in their knowledge to our, our, uh, our classrooms and um, be able to learn things in ways that we didn't even think possible 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago when we were in school. Maybe some of us, when I was in school, maybe not you. But overall, when we're talking about the multimedia, it's fun. <coughs> Excuse me. It's distracting. It uh, allows us to learn things differently, which goes back to fun. Uh, it make it personalizes what we're actually learning, and uh, if we if used correctly, there's no limits on what we can do. Um, even if it's used incorrectly, I suppose there's no limits of what it can do. But as teachers, it's our best practice and best policy to model good behavior. So, when you're out there looking um, at all the multimedia out there uh, that, that you can find, um, learn it as quickly as you can. So that way you can show the kids and then they'll be able to teach you additional things because they'll be so excited to use it. Thank you for checking out my short blog. Uh, I love multimedia. I love doing things with it. Uh, I hope you will too. Take care.